The next topic is another uh, piece of roller coaster news, and that is this. SeaWorld Orlando finally broke radio silence mm -hmm. this week on the opening day for their new premier rides, Skyrocket Coaster, named Icebreaker. With the pandemic continuing to push back opening dates for rides across the board, the wait is now nearly over for Icebreaker as its new opening date is confirmed to be February 18th, just over one month away. However, if you're a loyal pass holder to the parks, uh, the wait is even less. Pass holder previews will begin with Platinum Pass members on January 30th and 31st. After that, Gold members will have a preview from February 1st through February 6th, then Silver Pass members on February 7th through the 13th, and finally, Bronze members and Fun Card holders will also receive a preview on February 14th through 15th. Um, what are your thoughts on this coaster finally opening? I mean, this ride, we've... we've been watching this thing be built like i think it was announced in like 2018 20 early 2019 we watched all the way through 2019 this thing getting built uh, 2020 it just kind of sat there until the end and then the end of 2020 they started building it again uh, and it finished construction like right at the end of 2020 the beginning of 2021 and it's just been sitting there for like now like a year or more mm -hmm. uh, and we finally have not just an opening month not just an opening season we have an actual opening date and officially confirmed preview dates as well uh what do you what do you think on it fi about it finally opening yeah, I'm, I feel like it's about time. But at the same time, I feel that way about so many attractions. It, it's just been such a rough last few years. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. It's interesting, like today I was... Um, so today, when we were us recording this, um, I had kind of discussed in other channels the news of that as of the beginning of January of 2022 like then this is remarkably unrelated to this feeling, <laughs> my tangent but like disney's magical express like yeah. that ended january 1st and now they've got mirrors connection or something and another one is opening well, as another well. one but you have yeah. to pay for them whereas mm -hmm. um disney's magical express it was free and if you like look at the actual pricing like it's kind of wild um in comparison and not to go even farther down this tangent but it, the fact that the matter is this happened because of covid it was mm -hmm. a way to cut costs and unfortunately it's just one of so many things in the theme park industry that have just been either cut or postponed or pushed back and or changed in or some just sort changed. Yeah. and it, it just this unfortunately is just another victim to so many like like so many other things in the theme park industry and i'm happy it's still happening and there's yeah. still excitement and it's still gonna happen um Granted, yes, it, it probably should have happened much sooner, but, you know, I don't know. It's weird. Everything is so strange right now. Like, there's, mm -hmm. you know, I believe certain Broadway productions, they're actually going on hiatus until, like, March. Really? Yeah, of this year in because of, like, like resurgence. a resurgence mm -hmm. of, like, COVID cases. And so it's crazy, actually, if you think about it, because this attraction is now opening during, like, what you could argue is like the peak of the resurgence in yeah. at least central florida so like just given the recent numbers here and so it it's it almost seems like bad timing again and it's weird <laughs> like you yeah, know yeah. don't say that don't no, postpone it again I'm like, yeah. not, like, all the, I'm like not <laughs> all of out the way innings, but it's just you know like it's true like am i wrong like it's just so, everything no, is just yeah. so it's it's unfortunate because it, the last two years have just been so weird and now we're going into this really un unknown weird time into the unknown <laughs> but it's like no no more like yeah, yeah. you know and so we've again, had enough we've had enough <laughs> I'm, but i'm like it's exciting that SeaWorld is still opening this attraction and it it brings me like hope of like this yeah. better happier less sicker future but at the same time i can't help but like just be hung up on what is happening around me that's all yeah, you know, I saw, I think it was like 
right at the same time that they made this announcement, I saw the SeaWorld company, not just SeaWorld Orlando, but the SeaWorld company try to spin this as SeaWorld's gonna have the biggest, best year ever. They're opening more coasters this year than any other year in its history. Yeah. <laughs> and they try to spin it as like, you know, they're opening, I think it's like six coasters or something like that. Are they actually? Yeah. Cause yeah, uh, they've oh, got- oh, At all the SeaWorlds uh, or? Uh, like all the SeaWorld owned parks collectively. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, no, SeaWorld Orlando is getting six like, coasters. Six? I don't think yeah. so, yeah. No, uh, so they've got Icebreaker and then they've got Iron Gwazi. And then they've got uh, Empress, and then they've got Pantheon, uh, which we've talked about all these at one point, except for I don't think we've talked about Empress. Empress is basically a copy of uh, Shikra, kind of. Okay. Yeah. I love Um, Shikra. It's such a good ride. Yeah, it is. Uh, And then there's like a few others. I think uh, there's... I just say, whenever I go to Busch Gardens, I ride Shikra. Oh, you have to. Just, I wait, however long it is. Fantastic. You go in part for yeah, Shikra. For sure. Yeah, <laughs> It's like, it's one of the best. I still think that I like Shikra more than Val Raven, which Val Raven is uh, the dive coaster at uh, Cedar Point. Okay. And I think to this day, I think, I think one is about to beat it, or it might have already been beaten it I, I don't know if it's open or not but uh at least when i wrote it it was the tallest dive coaster in the world at the foul, foul raven at yeah. cedar point was the tallest dive coaster in the world and it was it also had like the most inversions on a dive coaster it was like the tallest longest and had the most inversions or something like that uh and i got off it and i was like that was a good ride i think i like chicra more <laughs> she is the one yeah. yeah well it's the theming of it i guess like it's more of like a scenic ride yeah you know like it's in one of the more scenic areas of the park um and i don't know every like there's something about when you go over the barbecue restaurant being able to smell all the barbecue yeah. like i just love it you know you don't get any barbecue at foul raven come on guys um but you do get to see dave's uh if you know if you know you know uh, you do. It's right next to Dave's, and that's like the perfect stop for like you need a drink. Go to Dave's. Go to Dave's. Yeah. Uh, anyways, drink at Dave's. <laughs> drink at Dave's. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but yeah, I don't know how we got off on that topic. No, of but course. yeah. Uh, uh, one last fact about Chikra, by the way, it was the world's first dive coaster that was genuinely, actually, a vertical drop. That's crazy. Yeah. So. It was the second built in the world, mm-hmm. um, but the very first one built was at, I believe it was Alton Towers uh, in England, but it has an 89 degree drop. Yeah. And this was the first genuinely 90 degree drop, a drop yeah. I believe, in the world. I'm like, it's now that we're talking about it, I'm like getting the sensation of like that experience you feel like. Oh, yeah. Like, like in your stomach. Yeah. 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 There, there's... <laughs> Like, it's almost <laughs> impossible to not scream. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah, yeah it's insane. Um, there's a funny story of that ride, though, when it first opened that uh, I heard an engineer of the ride talk about. Uh, and it was also the first B&M dive coaster to have, like, those water fins. Mm-hmm. Like, that was something that Bush Gardens developed with them. Um and it has now become like a staple of those rides you know like the dive coaster going through the water and spraying up the water uh that's like become a icon of the b&m dive coasters but that started with chikra at bush gardens um and when they first did it it was one it was it was theming but two it was also a practical way to slow the coaster down it was like an extra brake system without having to have brakes on the ride um but when they made the fin for it uh it was so much like it's that coaster went so fast through it that they said that there were people getting off the serengeti express on like which if you know the the park there's the like there's shikara but then the serengeti express is like on the other side of the pathway it's a huge path like it is easily like 300 feet from uh like the beginning of that yeah of the actual like of the actual decline or whatever yeah. yeah uh it's probably like 150 feet or whatever from when it stops scooping water but still uh so it's like 300 150 to 300 feet away and people getting off the serengeti express were getting soaked 
because Shikra was shooting so much water out of there that it was flying across the pathway yeah. and hitting the train on the other side. I believe that. <laughs> and so they had to re-engineer the scoop to be less powerful because people just were getting demolished. Like they said there's uh, a time where a lady had to go to health services because the water hit her so hard that it's like knocked her off her off feet. Off her feet. That's yeah. crazy. And so they had like they said that there were like five or six iterations of, <laughs> of, that of the system. Yeah. system. Yeah, to like slow it down to give us a cool water effect but also not hurt anyone <laughs> it's i mean it still splashes you as you walk past like it, if you're close to it you know yeah. well yeah it's designed to splash yeah. you like you're supposed to get wet with it but you're not supposed to get demolished yeah. <laughs> like yeah anyways uh i, I just a cool story to no, tell course. about Shikra. But uh, let's get off that tangent. Uh, we're talking about Icebreaker. We're talking about Icebreaker. Um, but yeah, no, I just thought it was funny that SeaWorld tried to like spin this as like, it's going to be our biggest, best year ever. It's like, no, it was going, it, th this should have opened in 2019 or 2020. Yeah. It should have opened in 2020. Uh, it's not going to be your biggest, best year ever. You're just making up for all the crap that you Those gave us yeah. <laughs> over the last two years. So, like, time to pony up and finally open the rides yeah. is what is happening. Um, yeah, it is a shame, you know, the events of 2020 and even a lot of 2021. Uh, 2021, we saw a lot open from the stuff that should have opened um back in 2020 like we saw a lot of it open but there's still a handful of things and specifically at the sea world company uh being sea world orlando and bush gardens tampa there's a lot of stuff that just like it sh should have opened like crowds have been back to the parks uh like there was really no excuse for them to not open it um and this is just one of those rides. So I'm glad that it's finally opening. Um, we talked a lot about it in last week's podcast uh, where Trisha and I were, were talking specifically about like the ride where it's located and just who it's targeting. And I think that uh, this is gonna be the perfect ride for the park. It's like the perfect addition because it's like that next step, you know, like they have, they have like the kiddie coasters and they have the big coasters for the young adults yeah. and the adrenaline chunkies, but they don't really have anything in the middle. And this is like that perfect next step coaster. I think, uh, it doesn't have any inversions, but it has a lot of thrill factor because it is, uh, it has, it features multiple launches. Uh, it has a backwards launch and it has a forwards launch. Uh, so I think actually I think it goes forwards first and then it goes backwards and then it goes forwards again and then uh, it complete yeah I don't know I it's honest, a lot of movement it's a lot of movement yeah. on this ride <laughs> uh, but so it's going to be thrilling for sure it's going to have some speed I think it hits I think they said 56 miles an hour or something like that it's just under 60 uh, and so it, it's got speed it's got some fun elements there should be a lot of airtime on it uh, but. Yeah, it's not going to be anything crazy. So I think it's going to be like that good. If you if you rode the the little coaster in Sesame Street, uh, and that was okay. But you don't want to ride Kraken. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Icebreaker might be a really yeah. good like stepping stone. Um, and that's something that, that park doesn't have a whole lot of, uh, if anything at all. So I think it's the perfect ride. I'm glad that's opening. I actually uh, I'm I'm a bad park host theme park podcast host because i didn't look into this uh but i know originally they had this you had to visit the park three times like this is what they said when they announced that they were going to do early previews of it you had to visit the park three times before the end of december 2021 in order to do it but what they announced seemed like as long as you had a pass we're dividing it up into these days like the days that i read off uh and if you have a pass you can go so i'm gonna have to do some more research on that when i figure if when i figure that out or uh hear more about it i will definitely let you guys know uh but if because I, I went twice before december so i didn't quite make that three to like regardless yeah. of however you know whatever uh but if they scrapped that and just went with, well, if you have a pass, uh, I do have a gold pass. So that means between February 1st and 6th, uh, I'll be able to 
experience it. And if I can, I'm definitely going to be there and I'm definitely going to try to experience it. I will film a vlog. You're going to break the I, ice. I'm going to break the ice <laughs> on Icebreaker. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, somewhere between February 1st and February 6th, <laughs> yeah. I am breaking the ice. You're breaking the yeah. ice. Uh, but yeah, no, I'll definitely give my thoughts and opinions. This is, I'll be honest, it's a ride that I am excited for because of what I just said. It's yeah. the perfect fit for SeaWorld, but it's not a ride that I just cannot wait for. It's not Guardians of the Galaxy. No. You know, it is not... Iron Gwazi at Bush Gardens. It's not like Velocicoaster. It's yeah, it's not, not like, like Velocicoaster yeah. or Hagrid's or whatever. But it is. It's. I would put it more along the lines of like Tigris, which is made by the same company. It's a premier ride, um, and so I, yeah, I would put it along the kind of like same excitement level as Tigris. Bush Gardens needed a ride like Tigris. It fit the the bill, but was it something that I was like super hyped for? No. But when I went to the park after it had opened, like I didn't drive two hours for opening day for Tigris. But when I was there, uh, was I excited to ride it? Yeah. Did I have a good time on it? Yeah, it's an all right ride. It did the job. It did the job. Yeah, and I feel like that's going to be the same thing for Icebreaker. You know. But the question, guys, is for you. What do you think about Icebreaker? Are you excited? It are you excited that it is finally opening up? Are you going to venture out of your way to go to SeaWorld? Uh, well, not to. I don't want to make SeaWorld sound like a bad park. <laughs> SeaWorld's a great park. I love SeaWorld. But are you going to like specifically make the effort to get to SeaWorld? Yes. Uh, specifically for this. Specifically attraction. Specifically for yeah. this attraction. Um, I, I do need to clarify. I love SeaWorld. I didn't mean to phrase it in a horrible manner. But let us know what you guys think down below. Uh, I would love to know just kind of like just the general excitement level that people have for this ride. Uh, I feel like, you know, when a movie comes out and it has like a trail, like it has a trailer and it starts its marketing cycle and then it gets pushed for whatever reason, yeah. whether it's production issues, they need to do reshoots or like a pandemic hits, mm -hmm. like that never happens. Uh, and then that movie has to get pushed. Yeah. And then like a year later, you start seeing trailers for that movie again. And you're like, wait a second, that movie never came out. Yeah. I could have sworn that movie came out like last year. I feel like that's the overall reaction to Icebreaker to right now. Experience, yeah. It's like, wait, that hasn't opened yet. So I'm curious to know just like what the general opinion is.